Well, hello there. It's Melissa Van Arroya with Child Proof Parenting Live, and today I wanted to pop in and check in with you about what you thought on this week's topic, which was around screens and technology and how we manage these situations. Because I hear over and over from all of the parents that I work with that managing screens is probably one of the biggest challenges they have with their children. So I wanted to take an opportunity to talk about it today. I actually received an email quite a long time ago. It was actually something that went through the Child Proof Parenting course, something that was actually on the Green Lakes mom list, if you know who the Green Lake moms are. And um, I think that the question she asked is something that probably represents most of us as parents. So I want to share with you um, that question and then we'll talk about some of the specifics on how we manage. So it says, Dear, I'm just gonna read it off my computer which is right down below here. Dear Melissa, we have a five-year-old boy who has been exposed to iPhone and iPad games and stories. Some educational and some not so educational. <clears throat> Angry Birds. So um, on a daily basis, he asks if he can have our iPhone or iPad to play a game. Often it seems like my exhaustion level is what dictates whether or not he gets to have it. Yes, we have a time frame of no more than one hour total between pre-recorded TV shows and games. Some days are just full of play and friends, so no games at all. Even when I set a timer so he knows when it's time to stop, it still ends in a battle or tears. I'm just so struck by how insistent he can get in arguing with me about getting a chance to play the games. What do you suggest to achieve a good balance while maintaining a good relationship with your child, especially boys? Well, that is a great question and I appreciate you um, sending that in and I thought that I'd share it with all of you because it sounds familiar. I know many of you got my email this week about a particular game my 11 year old son has been playing that has required us to kind of go back and reassess our limits, what our agreements are with him, and how he can enjoy it, because this is actually a social game that he can play with friends, um, but it also gets in the way of many other things, like spending time with family, reading, homework, all of those things. So we have to be really thoughtful and intentional about it. Otherwise, it does get really frustrating. At least I know for myself, I just get irritated and aggravated when I see my kids looking at screens, whether it's watching videos or playing games or one thing, um, another parent had responded to my email said, yeah, I've limited the amount of games my kid can play, but now he watches YouTube videos of other people playing games. It's nuts. So um, I think this is a common challenge that a lot of us face. And I think getting really clear and having conversations with our kids about what the limits are. And I, I suggested creating a contract and I gave you a sample contract in that blog post that you could download and print out or change or whatever you want to do with it. Um, and I will link to that so you can have that. But in thinking about your limits, first of all, um, getting clear on what what you want to see happen. And then having a conversation with your child. This isn't, I've decided these are the limits and you must follow them. I think it's really important to have the conversation with kids, keep them included, because they're more likely to conform and agree and follow those limits if they've been part of the process. So thinking first about when it is okay for children to get on screens, is it, First thing when they get home, is it after homework? Is it only in the mornings? Is it just right before dinner? Think about when it's okay for them to be on screens. Then talk about how long of time they can spend with screens. And I know I'm using the word screens or technology. It really represents iPhones, iPads, computers, games, YouTube, shows, whatever. So whatever it is in your life. Think about how long it's okay for you to allow them to use them. Now, I wanna note that children under two are not supposed to have any exposure to screens. I know that's like almost impossible because screens are everywhere, but being mindful that um, it's not helpful 
for two year olds at all to look at screens. So um, wait if you possibly can to bust that out. I see people in restaurants all the time busting out a video on their phone to keep their child quiet um, and not disruptive. And it's really unfortunate because not only are they getting the screen exposure, but they aren't learning to be tolerant when they have to wait. They aren't learning to figure out what to do when they're bored. There's a lot of things kids don't learn when they're exposed to screens. Even if it's an educational program, there are things that your child is losing out on, like playing out outside and enjoying the weather and nature or friends. So just being mindful. It's not that it's necessarily a bad thing in itself. It gets in the way of things that probably your child actually really needs. So um, how long your child can use that screen um, and whether it's once a day or it's two small blocks a day, I'm getting really specific is key. Then you need to talk about what is okay. If you're okay with the game, but not watching people play games on YouTube, then you have to be clear about that. So get clear about what games, or maybe your child wants to play Mortal Kombat, which is not appropriate for children. Um, be clear about what he can or she can play versus what they can. And you've got to put the hard limit on those things. But I think instead of focusing, you can't play this, you can't do that, focus on what they can play. Hey, you are welcome to get out the sports game. You're welcome to do the, you know, race car game, focus on those things that your kids can do. You're just much more effective. In thinking about kids and their ability to manage themselves, um, one thing to consider is their age and maturity. Every child develops at a different rate, so think about what your child is capable of managing. Really important. I think um, one of the most significant factors in helping kids learn to manage their time on screens is our modeling, <laughs> managing screens. So making sure that we're not picking up our phone every few minutes, that we're not sitting in line watching a video, that we're not talking on the phone all the time, that we're present with our kids because we can't expect our kids to regulate themselves if we're not doing that same thing. So be really clear maybe in your conversation or your contract about the rules that apply to everybody in the home. So dinner time, you know, phones are put away. First thing when you come home, you know, the focus is homework and cleaning your lunchbox or whatever, no phones. So be really clear, talk about where the phone goes when it's kind of in a timeout. Um, so everybody is on the same page and has very clear expectations about what is expected of them. Um, another thing that I, I think is important is once you have established these things with your child, the limits, the boundaries, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, you must be consistent. Because if you let things go and you know, you're know you kind of feeling lazy, which happens to us all, they are going to continue to push the limits. They're gonna to continue to get frustrated and angry with you when you do take it away because you have not been consistent and they don't know what to expect and they expect that they can pretty much do whatever they want when there aren't limits and boundaries. So I think being really mindful that once you create this plan with your child or you ha create this contract with your child that you maintain consistency in how you follow through. So those are just a few things that I want wanted to give you to think about in regards to managing screens. I know um, there's not a great um, strategy to help kids feeling frustrated and I and I know she talked here about her child struggling and go, coming to tears every time and some of that with really young kids is really um, due to the inability to regulate emotions because the brain is not fully developed, which actually doesn't happen till later, till their 20s. But up until seven years old, the brain is very much under construction. There's very little emotional regulation um, and impulse control. So being mindful of that, of what they're capable of and what they're not capable of can help you stay calm and present because it's very easy to escalate as the parent when they are not abiding by 
what the limits were that were set together. Now, when children don't abide by those agreements or those contracts or those rules that you set, whatever you want to call them, um, they could be guidelines. I think sometimes there needs to be a consequence and the natural consequence was you lose the privilege of using it tomorrow or you lose half an hour tomorrow. Whatever it is you feel is reasonable for the consequence to not be a punishment and actually be a consequence that teach. It has to be related to what happened. So abusing the phone, you lose time on the phone. It has to be reasonable. It's not like, you know what, for the next month, you don't get to play that game on your phone. It's just like, hey, you know what, tomorrow we're gonna skip playing on the phone and you can try again on Thursday. Um, so being related, reasonable, and delivered respectfully. So this is in your court. You have to be mindful of how you are responding. If you respond out of anger and say, you know what, you're losing your privileges tomorrow. You don't get to use it because I told you to put away. When we come from that place of frustration and anger, it immediately becomes a punishment. So be mindful of, hey bud, bummer. Tomorrow, you're not gonna be able to play games because you didn't put it away when I asked you to. You're welcome to try again on Thursday and put it put it away on you know after your hour or whatever it is. So being mindful that sometimes there is a consequence um, and it needs to be related, reasonable, and delivered respectfully. So I wanted to open it up for questions, and I actually got a lot of feedback um, from parents when I shared this this week on Wednesday. One of the parents said, "I actually threaten." daily that I'm gonna throw my child's iPad out the door when we're in the car. So that is another great place to limit screens. We, I see parents heavily relying on screens in cars to keep kids quiet, and kids don't learn how to be quiet in cars unless we give them the opportunity to practice. So that might be a place to eliminate screens altogether, especially if it's frustrating to you while you're driving. I know loud kids in the, in the back of the car can be frustrating as well, but they need the practice to learn to to regulate themselves, to keep their voices low, to have a conversation. Um, so please give you know those those opportunities. But I love that she owned that. Wow, this probably isn't very mature of me. Um, you know, and we all do and say these things. We all get to a point where we don't have access to our rationale, and we say and do really stupid things as parents. We all do it. I do it all. You know myself from time to time. So um, that was a great comment. And then another parent had written in who I've worked with before that this is an issue with her son and her son is actually playing the same game that my son is, which she reminded me is called Fortnite. If Fortnite is new in your household, you are not alone. And we've had really clear limits and boundaries in our home, but Fortnite became new and exciting. And there are now people you can talk to when you're playing Fortnite. So we needed to revisit our contract, which we've done. We're very clear and we set those limits with our kids because otherwise they get too much they're missing out and I'm pissed off, right? So let's avoid all of that together and take the time up front to have these conversations with our kids. All right, well, I just wanted to check in with you on this um, topic this week. And I know it's a very popular topic. It's something everybody struggles with. So if you have more questions or comments about this topic, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. And if you do have a specific question for me, please be sure to tag my name in it so I see it immediately. Otherwise, I might have a little bit of a delay in getting back to you. All right, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful weekend that you get to spend a lot of time with your kids. There's no screens bugging you and you just enjoy the time that you have together with your children. Bye for now. I will see you next week.